Last week, I told you that I do, I try to throw in different stuff all the time. This is different stuff, just like last week. Last week, we looked at Satanism and witchcraft is on the increase. These are spiritual things. These are, these are attacks on the church spiritually. This is where we need the full armor of God to withstand the attacks. It doesn't say that when you put the whole armor of God on that you go out and attack. The armor of God makes you stand and you can quench the fiery darts of the devil. We're talking spiritual. I want to look at some physical things today. And one of the things that I want to talk about today, I'm still trying to talk about it. Oh my gosh. Oh, Cindy, what am I going to do with you? Okay. Well, I've lost the whip stitch. Aha, there's the problem. There's, no, there's only two steps. <laughs> well, good morning. <laughs> this morning when she was... No, never mind. Ta-da! I want to talk about artificial intelligence. What in the world is artificial intelligence? It's intelligence that's artificial. Thank you. Have a nice day. AI is the big thing right now. They're calling AI the new electricity. I want you to think back, some of you can't, but 50 years ago, 100 years ago, only Don can do that, and he's not here, so he can't tell us. But I want you to think back that when electricity first started, you had, a, you had a wire coming down out of the ceiling with a little pull chain and like a 40-watt bulb. You clicked it on there, and that was like, wow, this is incredible. And no one knew at that particular time what electricity would do to the world, how it would change the world. The fact that you're hearing my voice through the speakers is electricity. The fact that the cool air in here is electricity. The lights we have is electricity. You can't start your car without electricity. This little gizmo with the wireless part is electricity. Electricity literally changed the world. And they're saying that AI is the new electricity. How many, how many have seen movies like Colossus, the Forbin Project? It's back in the 60s. Dr. Uh, Forbin makes a computer, turns the computer on. It finds another computer just like it in Russia. They talk to each other, and they're supposed to protect the United, you know, ours is protect the United States. Theirs was to protect Russia. They get together and figure out the best way to protect each other is control all humans. And that's what they did. They took over and controlled all humans. And if you didn't do what it said, it launched a nuclear strike on a city. So everyone was in bondage to the computer. 2001, a space odyssey. How? The big computer on the... All this is AI. But see, those are, those are movies, and this is all futuristic. No, AI is here today. It's already here. It's not something that we're looking at in the future. AI is here. Microsoft has AI. Google has AI. IBM has AI. 
Russia and their people have AI. China has, and their people have an AI system. These are all systems they have. Not going to make, they have. This guy right here is one of the brainchilds of um, AI that works for Microsoft. I don't want to say a whole lot about him. There's another one I, I do want to talk about. This is Sophie. This robot will carry on a conversation with you. It acts just like a human. It blinks. It smiles. It turns its head. It looks at you. You ask it a question, it will answer. It will ask you a question back and respond to your answer. When they did this on CNBC, they brought another robot in, just like that, set them down, and they had a conversation between each other. And after 15 minutes of them two talking to each other, it came up of taking over the world. Both of these robots were talking of taking over the world. Now, they all laughed about that, thinking that, well, it was programmed to do that. But yet, these are autonomous robots. And it's interesting that that's what it came up. And it's interesting that there was another computer just like that, and when they talked to it, the conversation again went to taking charge of the world. They're going to introduce AI worldwide. They're going to sell us a, a, a bag of goods that sounds like it's going to be helpful. Why, it's going to assist the doctors. It's going to reduce all the mistakes that they can make. It will assist in surgeries, which they have, by the way. They're doing that. Um, all these things, the research, the studies, this is really interesting right here. Uh, monitor and vi or of uh, vital statistics. To have an AI that really, that really works. This is a dragonfly, but it's a robot, the size of a dragonfly, and it has a little microphone right here, so it can fly around the room and listen to, to what you're saying. This is a mosquito, but it's a robot mosquito. And you can't hardly see it, but there's a needle that comes out right there. And that silly thing can fly around and land on you. It can take a DNA sample, or it can deposit whatever it wants to deposit. It could be a poison, or it could be a DNA changer. I'll get to that maybe sometime. Here's a spider. See that needle coming down? That's an assassin spider. It can inject poison into you and kill you and the thing is this is this is not hooked up to a system the system is in it which means it's autonomous it thinks on its own and when they use these in testing the spider couldn't make it up a stairway or something the dragonfly came and picked they can communicate with each other and there's videos of this now get this the dragonfly comes down, picks up the spider, takes it to the top of the stairs and drops it off and lets it go do its thing. They communicate with each other. To have, here's a fly that has a camera and a microphone on it. This can fly around the room, land on the wall and watch and listen to what you're doing. This, this exists, this is real. And the thing is, this is what we know. What is it that we don't know that's still secret? Here's a little bitty one. It can fly around. This one's really cool. This is an assassin bot. They can take this. It's autonomous, not hooked up to anything. They tell it what they want. They program it. It has facial recognition. They throw it in the air, and it flies around the room, and when it roop and checks the faces, and as it's flying around, and it checks the face and sees the one it wants, flies into it and has an explosive charge and detonates. This is real. They've already got this. They've already got this. 
Have you ever taken your iPhone Oh, look, I got an email. Um, go to your camera, hold it up, and I'm doing this right now. You can't see it, unfortunately. But as I'm holding this up and going around the room, it puts up a little square around your face. How does it know that's your face? Facial recognition. This, there's three levels, three levels of AI. This is the lowest level of AI there is. Hey Siri, what is John Wayne's birth date? John Wayne was born the 26th of May, 1907. Fifty years ago, how would you have found out his birth date? Yeah, if you have an encyclopedia or you have to go to the library to get the encyclopedia. And hopefully, that information would be there at that time. Because if it didn't, you'd have to go to some magazine and hopefully find that in something. It's at your fingertips now. It's at your fingertips. Hey, Siri. What is the diameter of the moon? Here's an answer from wikipedia.org. At 3,474 kilometers, 2,158 miles across, the moon is 0 0.273 times the diameter of Earth. Fifty years ago, I doubt if you could have got that information out of an encyclopedia. It's at your fingertips today. That tells me that for AI, now here, man, there's so much. Here's another thing I want you to understand and be very cautious about. This is always listening. I didn't turn nothing on. I just said two words, and it activated. About three weeks ago, Peg and I were in the family room having coffee, and we were talking about, I think it was painting, I'm not sure, but I think we were talking about painting. We were going talking about different colors, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. She gets on her iPad, and there's all these advertisements for paint. Now, where did that come from? Where exactly it was listening to us? When the smart TVs come out, the people that help make it said, while you're watching a smart TV, it's watching you. My point is, is that it takes tremendous amount of data to have an AI. It takes tremendous amount of data because it has to draw from all of that which brings in data mining, drawing out that information, looking at patterns. Everything you do is recorded. Every time you make a phone call, the date, the time, the number, how long you made the phone call, it, out of the cell towers that we see around the nation, do you know that there are towers that are not cell towers? They are listening towers. They listen to phone calls. That's what they're there for. The government, Homeland Security, and NSA, and all these other super squirrel people put these things up to listen to phone calls. These are the top 10 data, data mining companies, but that, that's not all of them. These are just some of them. This is big business. There is a, there is a company out in Arizona that has a warehouse the size of this church, not this, not this room, I'm talking about the whole church. And it has row after row after row after row of computers, and the only thing these people do is put information in. Every card that you've owned, every license plate that was on those cars, every phone number you've had, every address, 
every town you've lived in, every job that you've had, every income tax return, everything they can find about you goes in that computer. And it's all they do is gather information on people. And then they take that. This was, this, you go to um, 60 Minutes. They did a special on it. They got to look at it, the whole thing. And they sell that information to advertisers, government, police agencies, anybody that wants to pay for it. All that information. Facebook data mining scandal. 50 million users compromised from this leak. Data ripped included IDs, their friends' networks, various likes and interests from millions of Facebook users, officials from both companies, Facebook and the one that got it, uh, has taken, when it took place, there's nothing illegal. You gave permission inadvertently when you signed on the app to agree to use it. And if you've ever played these things where you've opened up the user agreement, it's like a page of the small print, and if you read it, you don't know what it said, but you want to play the game or do the thing or use it anyway, so you agree to it. All that information went to somewhere to a data miner. They've got all that information, your likes, your dislikes, your favorite colors, passwords. What am I saying? What I'm trying to tell you is there's no privacy. They know everything about you. Well, who cares? They can, I'm not doing anything illegal, so who really cares whether or not they know anything about me? Whoopee. Well, one of these days when the Bible becomes illegal, it becomes a hate book, and they're trying to do that. And they, they make the Bible to where it's a hate book. This book will no longer be allowed. Someday they're going to attack it and say, this is a hate book. You can no longer do this, 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 this from here. And if you do, and you go against the federal government, you become a domestic terrorist. Terrorists have no rights. You can't, you can't, they don't have to give you an attorney. They can hold you as long as they want without court hearings. And this is all legal. And I've been saying this for years. They're changing laws. They're making things happen. Not for regular people. For those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. People, these things are coming. And the reason I'm doing this is to stir us up to know what is coming. And we can get our act together and be the church. How many remember the Terminator? I loved it. Oh, that was good. I'll be back. Yeah. I like the way the dude's smiling right there. Pretty happy, isn't he? Um, in the Terminator, they had this thing called Skynet. The government made this AI that whenever you turn it on, all their little robots and all their defense systems would be under the AI system, the Skynet system, and everything would be fine. But they turn it on, and here again, the AI says, well, the best thing for us to do is to save the world is get rid of humans. And that's what it started doing. What is Project Maven? That's the Pentagon's AI project that Google employees wanted out of. They started this AI program just like Skynet. And Google looked at it and said their employees, not Google as a business, but their employees said, we don't want part of this because this is made for war machines in killing. So they backed out of it. Pentagon had planned to put this in effect 2017. But when Google went out, no problem, 
I mean, when Google dropped out, Microsoft came in and finished it. So in other words, we now have, these are unmanned planes that is flown by AI. And you can see on there, U.S. Navy. Here comes an unmanned plane flown by AI, seeing if it can land on an aircraft carrier. Did it with ease. Here's a helicopter armed to the teeth. No pilot. AI flies it. This is a, I want to say an armored personnel carrier, and it is, but it's armed and it's driven AI. Doesn't have to have a driver. Here's a tank. No driver, no people in it. Everything is operated by AI. This is Chinese. This is the Chinese version. No driver. Artificial intelligence runs it. This is Egypt's drone. AI flies it. Russia's unmanned combat aerial vehicle. Russia has it also. I'm telling you, it's global. It's not just some fantasy thing that the United States has come up with. This is a global thing that is here now. Another whoop de doop de tank. AI controls will control where you shop, the electricity you use. You know, how many of you <laughs> have electric meter on, your, on the side of your house? And you know, the guy used to come out and look at your meter and write it down and you'd go out and bang it and try to get it to change and do stuff, you know. And they don't have to do that now. The meter reads itself and sends it to the company. It did away with that person. It's totally automated, totally autonomous. So we have bugs, this AI, with its bugs flying around. The vehicles, unmanned vehicles. See, our military cannot be used. The Constitution says the military cannot be used against its citizens. It doesn't say anything about the machinery. How many people have one of these little gizmos sitting in the house? I, I don't even know what it's called. Alexa. Alexa. I'm almost afraid to say it. Something will come on, you know. <laughs> Alexa, put on some music. Music comes on. Your favorite music comes on. Alexa, dim the lights. The lights go down. Alexa, lock the front door. The door locks. By voice, you tell that, and it does it. But when AI decides it wants to take over, it'll do it its way. And what are you going to do to stop that? Now, this sounds like science fiction, but the AI is here now. And this, like I said, this phone, just by me saying what I said, the two words, activated. It's listening. This is the lowest form of artificial intelligence but yet it has access to so much information. And it's at your fingertips. Every phone you buy now is that way. Let's look at some uh, scriptures that are really technological scriptures. Revelation 7, 11, 7, talking about the two witnesses. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets in that great city, which is spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Sodom and Egypt is talking about Jerusalem. That tells you Jerusalem's really going to go downhill. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies. How are we, if this is in Jerusalem, how are we going to see their dead bodies lying in the street? CNN, Fox, 
but 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago, you read that scripture, and we'd have to allegorize that. We'd have to spiritualize that in some way because it's a technological scripture that technology increased to where that scripture can come to pass now. Couldn't back then. 50 years ago, we couldn't see it. They'd have to go over and film it, come back, undo it, you know, put it in a thing. Now then, we can watch it live. Matthew 24, 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let him which is being Judea flee into the mountains. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation in the holy place. That's in the temple. Are any of you allowed in the temple in the holy place? No. Well, how are we going to see that? Webcam, CNN, Fox. Fifty years ago, that was an impossibility. Today, it can happen right now. That's possible. These are technological statements within the Bible. You know, there's another one, and I can't think of where it is right now. It talks about the, the skin melting off bodies and their eyes burn out of their head and and it, it's, a, it's an exact picture of a nuclear detonation. 75 years ago, 100 years ago, somebody would have looked at, read that, and, and sit there and went, well, I tell you what that is, they were standing too close to the cannon when it went off. That's what that means. But that's not what it means. Back then, they would have had to spiritualize it or allegorize it in some way. Today, that verse is possible. Matthew, I now brought this up last week, and I'm going to bring it up again. Matthew 24, 11, And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, because of lawlessness, because of sin, shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. And we are seeing this today. The world is falling apart. There is violence. You can't turn on the TV. I can't turn on my iPad without notifications of shootings. I just saw something last night. Some guy in another country, a gunman, killed over 100 people somewhere. I don't know where it was at. I need to figure that out. But every time you turn it on, it's school shootings, it's uh, disgruntled employees shooting somebody, this shooting, that shooting, somebody ran over into a crowd, children killing parents, parents killing children. This is what's going on today because there's so much stuff in the world, the love of many will wax cold, and because the other camp will never have love. We have got to have love. Amen. In fact, I'll say this. See, God is love. He's not, he's, not a per, he's not a God that loves. He is love. And if we are born from the seed, from His seed, then that means we, everything about us, everything we say, do, and think ought to be bathed in love. And if it's not, you need to be asking why. Why do I have such an anger for that? Why do I dislike that person? Why is it I just ooh, ooh, don't want to punch him in the head? Where does that come from? That's not God. And if we're not careful, last week I brought up those four things we need to be doing. Being in the Word. Uh, praying doing what we're supposed to be doing, all these things, any one of those are good. Being in His presence, it was talked about this morning in worship, being in His presence, and that is great to be in His presence. It feels good to be in His presence, but that's not enough. 
Satan was in his presence and fell. How many have seen the movie Fahrenheit 451? Ray Bradbury movie. Okay, a couple of us. It's a good movie. Well, I think it's a good movie. Fahrenheit 451 is about a fire department. They do not go around putting out fires. They go around starting fires. It's a futuristic thing. Books are illegal. You gaining knowledge is illegal. And what they did, they, if somebody had books, they would call the fire department. Fire department would come with their flamethrowers. And 450 degrees is when paper burns. Fahrenheit 451 is the name of the thing. So they would shoot the fire and burn books, constantly burning books. The government was controlling what people had access to. The main fireman, or the main star, Montag is his name, didn't, he started looking at this and thought, this isn't quite right. I don't, this isn't right to me. And so what he did, he found the underground, there's always a remnant. He found the underground, and they took him to a place out in the woods where everybody had a book. If you became part of the underground, they would give you a book and it was your job to take that book, and you went out there, and you read it, and you read it, and you read it, and you read it until you memorized the book. And then when you had it memorized, you give it to somebody else. And if they found it and destroyed it, oh, it's okay, okay, there's, that book's gone. But then they would get together in groups, home groups. Think about it. Home groups. And one person would sit, and they would recite that book, and everybody would listen to it. Next week, next month, somebody else would come, and they would recite that book. And the books, the people became the book. We should become the Word of God. This should be, we should know this inside out, backward, forward. So when it becomes illegal and they do take it away or they try to take it away, I know God's going to have people. We're going to still have Bibles. They may be hidden. It may be contraband, but they'll be there. But you'll have it here. Jesus was the Word, and the Word became flesh. We have the Word, and it ought to be in us that we become this word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never, never pass away. That's like saying there's going to be a storm and the tornado's going to come and it's going to, it's going to tear up everything. It's going to destroy every single thing except what's standing by this pulpit. You know where I'm going to be when the storm comes? On the pulpit. And this lasts forever. This is the word of truth, and it lasts forever. So my point of all this is this. The church needs to wake up and realize, can you imagine what the Antichrist when he comes on the scene and the AI and he has all this information, do you know there's, they have a, a, a chip now, a tracking chip that is half the size of a grain of sand. They can incorporate it into a piece of paper. They can plant it in your clothes. You can ingest it in your food. They can inject it in a, vir in a uh, vaccine into your skin. And you'll never know it's there. Half the size of a grain of sand. Everything is so small, and yet it's so powerful. This is what's happening in the world today. Last week, we looked at Satanism and witchcraft is on the rise. No question about it. We see what they're trying to teach our kids in the school Disney is not fit to watch anymore because it's all about witchcraft and spells and, and who knows what all.
And a lot of that is our fault because we have not stood up and pushed back. We like our little comfort spots. I don't want to make waves. I don't want to do anything that makes anybody mad. But people, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to do something. Jesus said a new commandment that I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Wow. Jesus gave up everything. Let me put it this way. Jesus gave up everything for you. Everything. Whatever he was in heaven before he came down, he was the word. Whatever he was before he came, he gave that up. He is now a man and will forever be a man. And when he was on this earth, he didn't have nothing for you. And he died on a cross for you. That's how much Jesus loved you. And we are to love each other just like that. Oh, boy. Well, and by this, all men will know you are my disciples. See, I said something last week, and I'm going to have to hurry up. I said something last week. You know, we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's great. Antichrist is going to be able to do that. We can perform a miracle. Well, the Antichrist can do that. We can get up and say a good sermon, a bless, a really powerful message. Antichrist is going to be a great orator. But there's one thing his camp will not have, and that's love. They will be self-centered, haters, backbiters. You can read it all through there. That is what it's for. He only comes for three things, to steal, to kill, and destroy. There's no love in his camp. And when they see that we love each other and others, they will know. It is that love that they will know we are a disciple of Jesus. The great prostitute that rode the beast. I want to go through this real quick and I'll be done. There came one of the seven angels which had one of the seven vials talked with me saying, Come hither and I will show you the judgment of the great whore that sits on the many waters with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication with, blah, blah, blah. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a gold cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness. Boy, she looks good. She is decked out. All that beauty, all, that, all those jewels, and she is a doll. Man, you just look at that and go, Woo, boy, she's got it going on. Mm-hmm. And upon her forehead, a name was written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And that word means amazement. If you look it up, it's, I'm amazed, I'm perplexed. Why is he so perplexed? John just saw Seven-headed beasts come up out and snarling beasty things and angels with four heads with six wings that spun around and all this. He's seen all this crazy stuff in Revelation. This is chapter 17. And he sees this outstanding decked out woman riding a beast. And he's amazed. Why is he so amazed about that? Because that is the tribulation church. That's what the church had become. Prediction time. This is my prediction. This is not thus saith the Lord. This is a thus saith the Richard. I believe in the future the true church, and understand there's a difference. I'm going to say the true church and the fake church. 
those that go to church, those that are fake, those that are phony. I'm talking about the true church will always look to Jesus, will love the Lord, will do His work, call upon His name. But the fake church is going to get in cahoots with the world. It's going to be a lot of denominationalism. And, they're going to, and the world is going to set the, the pace as to what the church is allowed to do and what it's not allowed to do. And the fake church will follow that. But they will also persecute the real church. And it's this church, the fake church, that John looked at and marveled at what in the world just happened. Paul talking to Timothy says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endure, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. No matter what we go through, people, no matter what the world does, no matter what happens, God is on our side, and He will deliver us from all of it. But we have to know what's going on. We can't stick our head in the sand any longer. We have to speak out, speak up, push back, and say no to the nonsense that's going on in the world today. And it's up to the church. It's up to me and you to do this. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. See, the world wants to control The world wants to control, but we sang these songs this morning. We are free. The world's going to try to control us. More and more controls are being put on us. But we, those of us who are in Christ Jesus, are free. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity to share your word, what you have been showing me, just parts of it. So, Father, I just ask right now that you stir our hearts. You stir our hearts. You stir our spirits, Lord. Let that, let that fire fall, that zeal on the inside of us, Father, to stand up and say no to those things that are wrong, to write letters to senators, to change this thing, to push back as much as we can. That when you do come, you will look at us and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So, Father, I thank you. Though the world may be falling apart, the church will not. We will stand, we will do, we will worship, we will praise, and we will not fear. Raise us up, Father. Stir those dead bones, Father. Speak life. Let the, let the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh flow through this place, Father God, and bring life back to us again, Father, that we will stand and we will do what you tell us to do, Father. Lord, we just uh, we thank you. I bless every person that's here today, Father God. Thank you that you supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Bless them, Lord. Keep them. Use them. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.